They call them the dolls. They're anything but. <laughs> Sorry. We s I always love that. I, I basically throw like a suicide pass immediately. I told like a good joke and then immediately slash markered so I had no momentum coming into the video at all. Anyway, um, we're starting with Tradle as usual. It's a $3.2 billion export mostly scrap iron and iron ore, acyclic alcohols, nitrogenous fertilizers, dried legumes, sawn wood, pine nut, etc., etc., crustaceans. Crustaceans is always a good um, clue to get because it means you're probably on the coast. Materials being exported plus um, total volume of exports indicates to me that this is possibly Africa. I'm going to start with Western Africa, and I'm going to say that this is Burkina Faso. Just a guess. It is not Africa. Okay, it is South America or Central America. $3.2 billion of exports in South America is pretty low. I'm going to take this to Central America, although I'm assuming we would get a north at some point on the, on the westerly vector. Just because, like, there's... 3.2 billion is pretty low, and South America doesn't have that many smaller countries, you know? It's got Suriname, and it's got Guiana, French Guiana. It's got maybe, I have to imagine even Bolivia is higher than $3.2 billion in exports. Obviously, Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela, Colombia, Peru, Chile, Argentina. Did I say Argentina maybe already? Anyway, they, they're going to have more than this. So I'm going to, I'm willing to hit you with a Guiana and let's just see where the vector strikes us. So it's northwest of Guiana. This could be French Guiana. I, don't, I never know how close the borders are here. I never know the orders of the countries. I have to imagine that, like, this is too far to be Panama. Or too close to be Panama, I think. Could it be French Guiana? That's not a country, apparently. Um, could it be Suriname? I thought Suriname was more... Yeah, it is. Suriname is more east. Could it be... I feel like if it was like Costa Rica, we would have like bananas, tropical fruits or something. If it was Panama, we would have something related to ships, I would have to imagine. Just because like, why wouldn't you build a ship where the canal is? Maybe that's stupid reasoning, but it seems right to me. Scrap iron? Like, I really don't think this is going to be Colombia. There's no coffee. And plus, I think we had it. But it's like, <laughs> what the hell is French Guiana? There's Guiana, but there's no French Guiana. Is it not a French Southern Territory? It's not Curacao, Curacao, maybe? It's, okay, now I'm really confused. I guess Curacao is north, west of Guiana. I thought it was northeast of Guiana. This is bad. I don't think it's the Malvinas. Well, I think I, I'm... It's not going to be Venezuela. There would be, like, petroleum. So I think I have to go into Central America. No, but it's not. It's Curacao's not. It's, I'm missing an obvious country or something. I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> What's wrong with me? How can it be... There's something in between these two that I'm missing. Maybe a, a southern... A very, very southern Caribbean island which I maybe Trinidad and Tobago, which is kind of North America, but it's a little, oh, oh, okay, it's southwest of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm going to, I'm going to wash out today. I don't, I don't have a good answer. I don't know which, I don't, the islands in this region are not my strong suit. 
could this be perhaps a Saint Kitts and Nevitz? Or a Saint Bartholomew? It's not Saint Bartholomew. It is Ven wait, what the hell? I don't buy it. I simply don't buy it. Where's the petroleum? Data is wrong due to sanctions. Because of U.S. sanctions, they don't count the petroleum. Venezuela exports no petroleum. I don't I don't believe this. They're an OPEC nation, aren't they? Oil producing and exporting countries. Venezuela illegally sells oil to China and Iran. I'm honest, I'm when we get it wrong, I am okay with being wrong. This feels like we got caught on a technicality. Like they export oil and they get paid for the oil, but they're not going to count it like they oh, oh their leaderboard position is not going to be fair. We don't want them to get a G Fuel sponsorship based on how much illegal petroleum they're exporting. What do you mean illegal? Illegal according to who, Ben? Aquaman? I don't get it. This is a this is a damn scam. This is my first ever thumbs down to Tradle. But I understand like it's there's we're we're dealing with stuff above my pay grade, but it's the same reason they don't list like drugs in their sales. Yeah, but like like there's like ledgers, right? <laughs> like I feel like we don't know unless you you kidnap Gustavo Fring we don't know like how much cocaine comes like in on an itemized list from uh, like Colombia to other countries. But what we do know is that like there's probably like damn receipts. There's paper trails for the petroleum. Thank you for the rant. I missed it too and had the same rant until my wife told me to shut up. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I mean, it, you know what? It's an interesting wrinkle. It was an opportunity to learn something. It is a little annoying, though. Because I feel like if, if it had been like, you know, 15, 20 billion and petroleum had been at the top of the list, I would have been like, okay, it's probably Venezuela. But scrap iron? Okay, to honor Venezuela today. We will place it right there. It's quite far from Venezuela. Unless, oh, we don't count Venezuela because they uh, illegally got placed on the globe. I don't know. Fucking <laughs> shut up. Now, we know that Burkina Faso is 7,000 kilometers away. What if we moved an extra 1,000 kilometers in and said that this is the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo or the non-Democratic Republic of Congo? Okay, so it's 4,000 kilometers away. Go ahead and toss me a um, toss me a Spain on this one. Ooh, Spain is warmer. <laughs> so true. So well, probably not than the Congo now that I think about it. But it's I believe it's quite temperate at least. Twelve hundred kilometers from Spain. Can I get an Ireland? That's cooler. Can I get a? I always like to throw in a little Mali. Mali is cooler, okay. Closer to Spain and Ireland than to Mali. The hell are you? Tenerife. Did you mean Venezuela? No. Um, I just, the problem for me is I don't believe that, like, I could type in Switzerland and it's 7,000 kilometers from, or maybe it's 8,000 from Venezuela. Maybe, okay, let's try Switzerland. Switzerland. Switzerland is the warmest so far. It's 510 kilometers from Switzerland. It's not adjacent. Interesting. How about something crazy like Slovenia? It's two away. 
that's even warmer. It's 150 kilometers from Slovenia. How about uh, Czechia? That's adjacent. How about Poland? That's adjacent. Okay, I'm stupid. But it's not going to be Germany because Germany borders Switzerland. <laughs> so it's Austria. Austria. Austria is adjacent to the answer. <laughs> okay, it's Hungary. Hungary is adjacent to the answer. Okay, it's Slovakia. We got there. I honestly, first off, it's annoying that it took me 12 guesses. But how messed up is it that Slovenia and Slovakia don't border each other? We got you surrounded. Come out with your hands up. I'm Slovakia. I'm Slovakia. Why should they? Because the names of the countries are super similar. Like, think of it. North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe, adjacent. Guyana, French Guiana, adjacent. Congo, Democratic Republic of the Congo, adjacent. Slovenia, Slovakia, oh, sorry, no touching, no touching. Get over yourselves, man. What about Equatorial Guinea and Guinea Bisu? I'll be honest with you, I'm immune to the criticism there because I don't know the geographical position of either of those countries. <laughs> oh no, now I've done it. I tried to click to set my screen region. I accidentally clicked on an ad for Pepsid AC. Now that's all I'm going to get forever. I'm pretty sure this is just like, um, like Cambodia. This looks like Southeast Asia to me. Holy fuck. Could I... Uh, my name's Chandler. Could I be any more wrong? 18,000 kilometers west. Is it crazy to say that this is um, Venezuela? <laughs> Not that crazy. Not that crazy. Is it Colombia? It is Colombia. Okay. Okay. Well done. Thank you. It kind of looks like Cambodia, man. No, no jury would convict me. Here we go. September 24th, 1999. 1999. Holy cow. You want to talk a DreamWorks movie that went 6x in its second week at the box office? Offish. The genre is drama. It's not an animated film. It stars Kevin Spacey from 1999. Kevin Spacey, 1999. I'm going to call this American Beauty. But it is. Okay. I'm a genius. <laughs> no one has the courage that I do to say that even though Kevin Spacey has been canceled, American Beauty is still like a really good movie. A lot of people put some good work in there. Okay. Annette Benning put in some great work. The dude who was the dad on the OC put in some great work. Chris Cooper put in some great work in that movie. I will say, and this, this is my go-to movie when I talk about how much the world has changed in 20 years, is that in 1999, I guess, watching Kevin Spacey have like a good and stable job that probably had a pension and be like, I'm not satisfied in my life, I'm going to ruin it. You were like, dude... He's finding meaning in his life. This is like inspirational. Now you're like, what are you doing, you idiot? You got an amazing job. Just like stay in it. Until, like go to work for eight hours. Go home to your huge house with your nice family. Treat them better. And then like, you know, just enjoy your life and fucking die in 45 years, okay? All because you wanted to what? You wanted to bench press? You couldn't find the time to bench press because you were, you were working too much? Don't sleep with your daughter's 17-year-old best friend. You have to watch the movie, okay? It's that, like, he, there's, I'm not saying that uh, Lester Burnham is a good guy, but there is character growth that happens over the course of the movie. He doesn't sleep with his daughter's friend. Part of the... Uh, 
point of the movie is that he fantasizes it, but his own fantasy is naive. And then when it starts to manifest into reality, he's like, what the fuck am I doing? I've uh, fucked up my whole life. That's the point of the movie. It's the same people that are like, we got to cancel Robert Downey Jr. for Tropic Thunder. You don't understand? It's a satire. It's a satire. Okay, anyway. Paramount Pictures, 1999, opens to $23 million. All I'm saying is if we start, oh, there's bad people in the movie. Yeah, they're fucking fictional characters. Get in, Enjoy the future of cinema, where absolutely everything comes out on one of 35 different streaming services instead of actually going to the theaters, and the entire movie is just the most realistic depiction of a panic attack ever put to screen. But the thing having a panic attack, a panic attack isn't a real human being. It's a fucking, like... Uh, faultless cartoon animal, okay? Enjoy that, enjoy that. So Paramount Pictures movie, $23 million, 162542 The tens column beyond, probably not that relevant. New opening, 1999. Stars, Ashley Judd. This is double jeopardy. Ashley Judd, Benjamin Bratt. People went crazy for this movie. There's Ben. Listen, I know he's not billed here, but fucking Benjamin Bratt should be third billing. I know Bruce Greenwood. I think he's like Canadian American, but I'm telling you, actor two, Tommy Lee Jones, fair. Actor two, actor three should be Benjamin Bratt. Okay, Sony Pictures, second weekend, thirty-seven million dollars. Stars Martin Lawrence. It's Blue Streak. It's Blue Streak. A TBS classic. Certified TBS classic. Okay. Hollywood Pictures. Eighth weekend. $225 million. Starring Bruce Willis from 1999. Hollywood Pictures. It's The Sixth Sense. Okay. It, it, it couldn't have been like Armageddon. It had to be The Sixth Sense. Because this is not a famous distributor. And this is M. Night Shyamalan's debut. It had to be something that was not like a, you know, like a Disney production or something. Then I'm the M. Night Shyamalan got poached by the big studios and started going downhill. Anyway, well, maybe not. Like, Unbreakable's pretty good. Signs, I still think, is overhated. And maybe that makes it underrated. And then the re we don't need to worry about the rest of it. Now, this one. Second weekend, 23 milli. Not loved by audiences based on the legs. Stars Kevin Costner. It's not my actor. It's not my strong suit. From 1999, can I get a, a tagline? Billy Chappell must choose between the woman he loves and the game he lives for. Yeah, so it's some fucking baseball bullshit or fucking... Because, like, Tin Cup is from, like, 1996 or 1994 or something like that. Billy Chappell? It could be a football movie. Is this Any Given Sunday, maybe? I have to believe Al Pacino probably got top billing in any given Sunday. Can I get another actor, please? Kelly Preston. Is it Tin, tin Cup? Could have just been wrong. There's an, um, uh, Hope Floats is another one that's like I always get confused with Tin Cup. It's not Hope Floats. Okay. At this point, I mean, first give me the third. John C. Riley, Reveal All Hints. A baseball legend almost finished with his distinguished career has one last chance to prove who he is, what he is capable of, and win the heart of the woman he's loved for the past four years. Directed by Sam Raimi? I can only think of a movie called The Rookie, but I think that might be Dennis Quaid. The Natural? Is that another baseball movie? I haven't seen any of these except Field of Dreams. And it's not Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams, great movie. I haven't seen any of the other Kevin Costner base me baseball movies. Is this Bull Durham? I'm pretty sure it's from like 1986, so there's no shot. I give up. For the love of the game. All right. I don't know that one. <laughs> you got me on that one. $80 million, gross $35 million at the box office for the love of the game. Fair enough. I don't, I probably had heard of it back in the day, but I, I had long since forgotten about it. Pretty good though, 56 percentile, I'll still take it. What do you put in a baseball movie to make it $80 million? Kevin Costner?
John C. Riley. John C. Riley probably got paid two hundred thousand dollars for third billing in that movie, is my guess. This is pre Steve Brule, okay? Now let me see. We got Leonardo DiCaprio, Diamonds, Blood. So let's start there. Ryan Gosling, Blue Alcoholism. One week with Marilyn. Daniel Radcliffe, The Woman in Black. Blood Diamond, South Africa. Okay. Blood Diamond, Blue Valentine, The Woman in Black, My Week with Marilyn. Now it gets, it's tough. Okay. Um, blue, blue, blue blood with my, it's probably going to be a title. Diamonds, bl blue diamonds, black week. <laughs> uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, we, I think we could get here. Just give me a second. Blood horror kind of go together. My Bloody Valentine? Okay, it's literally that easy. But why are they putting the best uh, shoegaze band on the list? Now, this is a classic. I don't think I've seen any of these movies. I've definitely read the plot synopsis of Blue Valentine on Wikipedia, though. Is ML Shoegaze pilled? I was honestly listening to Shoegaze when you were probably in, like, the second grade. My ass was playing... What's the My Bloody Valentine album that comes before uh, Loveless? That opens with... do 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 isn't anything. Thank you. Thank you. Stop that snowball woman sign. It's not being a hipster. It's that I'm constantly, like, I, I fucking spend my time in the pitchfork trenches. And then people that are like 17 years old and got all their music taste from Mew come here and they go, how does he know shoegaze? Because I was, do, do not cite the old words to me, which I was there when they were fucking written. It's like asking, like, my dad how he knows Nirvana. It was on the radio. Anyway, um, reverse Sine 2 Nerdle. I'm just thinking. I'm so, uh, movies about um, <laughs> South Africa. Chappie. Mov movies directed by Neil Blomkamp. We have, uh, wait, movies with um, aliens. Um, there's a movies with aliens. Movies about South Africa's real, dude. Lion, Invictus, Chappie, Blood Diamond. Lion is about India, now that I think about it. Maybe movies about India. South District 9 is about South Africa. Batman Begins. Movies with movies with Dev Patel. Movies with Dev Patel. Movies about England. Movies with a heist. The Bucket List. Movies with aliens. Bro, what other movie here has fucking aliens? District 9. Ah, shit. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay. District 9. Let me hot let me hot swap for a second here. There we go. Okay. And then you got a connection here. These are movies. The Dev Patel was in Chappie, apparently. I did not know that. Okay, so we got six swaps left to finish the the reverse F here. I did not know that Dev Patel was in Chappie. All I know I know Chappie's in Chappie. And I know the Antwoord is in Chappie. Now let's see if we can come up with the Invictus has Matt Damon who I have to assume is probably also in Gone Baby Gone. Because there's an Affleck in that. Never mind. Wait, there's got to be like movies with a heist, man. 
Snatch, Blood Diamond, Ocean's 8, Pink Panther. Movies with Morgan Freeman, Invictus. Dev Patel, movies with a heist. Or diamonds. Okay, sure. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. We've been doing pretty well in Cine 2 Nardo lately. Pretty good, Fokker. Movie to movie. Seven years in Tibet. To Van Helsing. This is one that feels like there's like an amazing connection, but um, like I, I just if it, I don't know how to get from Ben or sorry Brad Pitt to Hugh Jackman that fast. But there's got to be a they've they've probably been in a movie together. You know what? I bet I think I know the connection. I think it's Brad Pitt. Actually, I think it's Jam Young, Jam Show, Wang Chuck. I think it's uh, Brad Pitt to like Deadpool. Two, <laughs> to Hugh Jackman, <laughs> to Van Helsing. Pretty good, pretty good, Fokker. Oh, oh, or you could also do Brad Pitt to Ocean's Twelve to Robbie Coltrane to Van Helsing. Of course, of course. I'll give you credit for the Robbie Coltrane if you actually got it. Guess the game. I know this game. I know these stairs. This is like Nidhogg. It's Lemmings! It's Lemmings! Yes! Ever tell you that um, we used to, in sixth grade, we had like a year-long lemmings competition in our class, like sanctioned by the teacher. Whoever got like to the furthest level got like a $20 gift certificate for a pizza or something like that. You had to store your password on a piece of paper because, I mean, it was back in the day. This is like the year 1999 or something like that. We got to like level, me and my partner got to level 80 or something like that. By the way, I think I'm, I'm being spied on by the guess the game or game deal developers. This is Smash Brothers Melee. I'd recognize it anywhere. Um, but then literally like a week before the end of the competition, my friend lost the password so we couldn't prove it. Even though the teacher had come by and seen that we were on like level 80 and then the next closest person was on level 50. He was like to teach you a lesson because you can't prove it. I have to give... Uh, the prize to the team that can actually prove it. We're in the sixth grade, you piece of trash. <laughs> What's the lesson? The lesson is that like he wishes that he got drafted in a war to fight in, but he didn't. But his dad was like strict on him, so he feels like he has to pay it forward to make us into like real men. We're 11 and 12 years old. The lesson is that he taught us a lesson that sometimes there's mean people in this world by being a mean person. Wow, good lesson. Anyway, um, I don't know this immediately, but I wouldn't be surprised if we get there. This, could, this is a Tales game. This is Tales of Simberseria. I'm skipping. This is um, Octopath Traveler. Oh! <laughs> It's Octopath Traveler 2. It's Final Fantasy. I'm skipping. Is this my last guess? It is. I, I just, I simply don't know it. It's Final Fantasy Tactics. Wrong. It's Final Fantasy 12. Okay. Well, fair enough. Okay. I would have recognized this guy. This guy was in all the promo art. You can see the bunny girl right there. Yeah, I haven't played Final Fantasy XII. I was in my freshman year of university when this came out. Not recognizing Fran. You, you, you and I are on different sides of the societal coin right now. Because I'm like, holy shit, you know their name? <laughs> Too busy drinking? Yeah! 
I was too busy getting hammered on uh, McClay's to play Final Fantasy XII in my dorm room. I'm not saying it's, like, better. I'm just saying that's where I was at. Oh, no, it's, it's the, the guessing portion. No regrets? I wish I studied more, but I definitely don't regret not playing Final Fantasy XII, you know? Like, it's, it's still there. I could always play it. Probably start with Dark Souls 2. Well, we got one green. Let's celebrate that. Call it Destiny 2. We got the, Getting this green is crazy. It's going to make our hint so much better. And then it's possibly for, it's first person only. Let's say it's a first person shooter from 2015 or 2016. It's Far Cry 4. Oh, oh, we've got many greens. We've got many, many greens. Well, well, well. First person from Ubisoft Montreal. But it's not in the Far Cry saga. It's The Division. One. That's a third person game. I'm going to guess that it's not the Division 2 then. Certainly not going to be Watch Dogs. Love to get the genre right. If I could just think of like, you know what? What if we just typed in Doom just to see if it's just a first person shooter? I'm not as smart as I thought I was. <laughs> It's not a first, just a first-person shooter. It might have RPG elements, too. Let me, let me take my clue. Let me take my clue. Engine is Anvil next. It's Shoot Mania. It's, I'm, I'm washed. I can't think of another Ubisoft first-person shooter. We got two of them. I think that's pretty impressive. It's Homefront. Pretty sure that's um, an Embracer group game now. <laughs> it was originally THQ. Uh, it's uh, Dead Island Riptide. Uh, it's the other one, um, Dying Light. That's Techland. Hey, we got, we got the year finally, though. I don't know, man. It's, it's Far Cry 7. It's Chivalry Medieval Warfare. Oh, that's a given. <laughs> I literally just forgot that Rainbow Six Siege existed. That one hurts. He's washed. I feel like if it had given me almost any clue, except for it being in the Anvil next, I might have been able to piece it together. But Anvil next? That's just not, that, that threw me off my game. Okay, Rotten Tomatoes, two words, 1979. It's a drama. Sophie's Choice. Nope. Certainly no movie in history has ever presented stronger proof war is living hell. Apocalypse Now. It's especially hell if you're um, Marlon Brando's handler. <laughs> I've never seen it. Anyway, we'll take that. It makes up for the Rainbow Six Siege uh, miss. We're going to go real quick here, okay? Because, like, I, I don't want to be late for Jackbox by more than five minutes. We're probably stuck with five minutes no matter what, but... Okay. Chrono photo. This is Bill Clinton being inaugurated in 1992. That's... Uh, right. Because the election's 92. He would be there in 93. Why not just be on time? Because I want to finish the guessers, which is there's like five of them left. And then I, I've got two hours of a sponsored thing that would take me to 12.05. There's your answer. Vietnam War 1968. 1965, we'll take that. This is um, Daisy Dukes. Soccer. Is this soccer or volleyball? They're playing soccer with a volleyball. 
Let's say this is like 1910. It's 1945. Holy cow. <laughs> this is everyone looks like Woodrow Wilson. So we're going to take this back to like 1905. What can I say? And then, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's literally Himmler. So this is going to be like 1940. Let's call this 41. It's 1942. We'll take that 3625. 3625 with a zero is not so bad. Housel. Presented by Tory Daly. There's no question this shit is in like Jackson Hole. So I'm going to call this a $4 million house. Bummer, too high. It's in Missoula, Montana. Never mind, it's an $800,000 house. Too low? 4,100 square feet. Uh, POV, you are about to be served three tacos for $27. It's in Majula. Um, it's $1.4 million. Still too low. Five bed, three bath. Kind of digging the bedroom, honestly. I do hate this. Listen, you can call me a hater if you want, because I bet you motherfuckers probably have this picture in your house. If you have like a, a decorative picture of New York in your house, just fucking like move there. But well, you love New York so much. I know you didn't take this fucking photo. You probably went to New York on vacation for like three days once and you were like, it's the greatest city in the world. Now you're decorating your whole house with pictures of another city. That, that's so like, I, I don't know, it's just weird to me. It's also weird to decorate your house with pictures of the city that you live in that you didn't take because you're like, I get it, you live here. Like, why do you need like a, a shot of downtown over your bed? But like, I don't know, it's just weird. It, loser mentality? Listen, you said it, not me. I'm going to say $2 million. That's too high. It's between 1.4 and 2. What the hell is that? It's like a fake stadium or something? In-home stadium? I, mean, I think it's a, like a mural. I don't know. Um, 1.75 million. You are a Housel legend. I'm crazy. What can I say? All that money and they project their home theater onto a blank wall. You know that I've said this many times, but I am not a believer in the home theater as like one of the best amenities to have in your house. I feel like people always end up doing it in like a way that's worse than just having like a good TV and a good sound system. It's always like 16 chairs that don't allow any intimacy and then like a 480p projector and it's like a popcorn machine. And I'm like, I don't want that. Just give me like a, I'll take like a sick living room or something like that. The hell is this? The running of the sheep in Wales? This is not Wales. This looks like Spain. Is it damn Popeyes or something? Are you Spain? The running of the sheep in Spain. Circa 2017. Sheep passing through central Madrid, where farmers exercise their right to use ancient migration routes. See, that's culture. I meant that shit is, like, annoying, but that's also culture. That's cool. This is the kind of shit you can do when your country's, like, you know, 30,000 years old. And in Vancouver, they're like, no fireworks. This is... is England. I see a Greg's. German... Wine Fest 2007. Keep Birmingham tidy. Okay, we got everything. German Wine Fest 2007. Did you guys attend? 
If you remember where you were during Birmingham's German Wine Fest 2007, then you weren't really there. A Buddhist festival in Birmingham. You got it spot on. This is Hu Jintao in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. En route to Hogwarts, apparently. Dressed like a nerd. Um, so you're probably like right near Crispy Field. Probably like right here. I'm going to say this has to be... He's probably in his late 60s now. I would say he's in his early 20s here. Let's call this 45 years ago. Let's put this at 1960. You know, I'm going to put it a little further ahead. I'm going to put it in 1973. It's 1985. I did get the name of the president wrong. I, I morphed two presidents together. Xi Jinping and Wu Jintao. But still, I'll take my 6,900. Mexico-U.S. border... 2018. Let's say it's here. I honestly don't have any like idea where it could be along here. 2000, what did I say? 2019? 2019? 2018. Oh! Oh! It's a tragic picture for a number of reasons, but one of them is it's all the way over here. Maybe you shouldn't have put it on a city. You're right. I shouldn't have put it on the metropolis of Reynosa. And should I, uh, instead, I should have taken a much smaller city like San Diego, which has like, you know, four million people or something. Okay, next round. This is, this picture goes hard as hell for sure. This has got to be like Moscow, 1996. Move the picture? I will not. <laughs> Teenager on a street in Moscow shortly before the collapse of the USSR? Yeah, she did that. 42,530, we take those. We have listed and travel. We can be not too late. We will not be fucking suck this year. It's just an, it's an, a nice, modest house. This is a $215,000 house. In Sterling, Colorado, it's a $200,000 house. It's 193475 house. It's a $196,412 house. Sold for 198000 891 square feet. And that was a quick one. OMG, it was, it was, and travel. Today, I'd like to go from Guyana to the United States of America. It's like we practiced for this. It's like we were made for this. You're going to go to Venezuela. You're going to go to Colombia. Then you're going to go to Panama. And now things get a little tricky. <laughs> you're certainly, at some point, you're going to be going through Mexico. So let's just put that on the critical path. Let's put that on the Gantt chart. And then Guatemala is somewhat large. Hey, it's on the critical path. Uh, Panama to, is not that large, by the way. We're going to go Panama to El Salvador. It's not on the critical path. You're going to go to Costa Rica. Yeah, it's on the critical path. You're going to go to Nicaragua. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you're going to go, your ass is going straight to Honduras. Pretty good. I, I, I hate that we added El Salvador. 
because it ruined our perfect, but otherwise pretty good. But also, I think we named every country in... Uh, oh, bless you. I think we named every country in Central America except for uh, Belize. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's basically borderline impossible to go wrong there. All right, slash marker, dolls.